This is Vadim from Online Training for Everyone. And in this video, I'll share with you how to pass a psychometric employment assessment test. A psychometric test for employment is a tool used to measure various psychological attributes, including personality traits, cognitive abilities, and behavioral tendencies to evaluate candidate suitability for the job. In this video, you will have everything you need to prepare for psychometric assessment test. Make sure to watch this video from the beginning to end and, if necessary, multiple times until you understand all the questions and know how to solve them easily. If you would like to practice with the most recent versions for psychometric assessment, please make sure to follow the link in the description or link in comments of this video. And now, let's go ahead and get started so we can get you prepared. Here is one of my favorite questions to test your analytical skills and attention to details. You need to determine which of the values is the smallest. And you're presented with five different values. The choices are A, 3 fourth, choice B, 0 0.6, choice C, 7 twelfth, choice D, 0 0.7, and last but not least, choice E, 4 fifth. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To get to the correct answer, we need to convert all the values to the common format. You can convert all the values to decimals, or you convert all the values to fractions. It doesn't matter, but it has to be common. I chose decimal format. 3 fourths in decimal is 0 0.75. 0 0.6 is 0 0.6 and 7 12th is 0 0.583. 0 0.7 has the same value, and 4 fifth is 0 0.8. Now you can easily see that the smallest value is choice C, 7 12th, which is approximately as 0 0.58333. Did you get to the similar solution? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. By solving this question, we will boost your IQ and intelligence. You are presented with three sets of stars. Each set is a different color. Underneath of each set, there are numbers. The first set has a number 24, second set has a number 64, and the third set has a missing number, represented by the question mark, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 75. Choice B, 96. Choice C, 156. And last but not least, choice D, 192. Take a close look to see if you can answer the question. This question is actually very simple, and I'm pretty sure you're done by now. So I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have guessed, the number is calculated based on the number of tips of the stars and number of sides of the diamonds available in each object. Let's look at the example. The first set of blue stars has six tips. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And it only has one diamond, which is represented by four sides. 6 multiplied by 4 equals 24. Can you do the calculations for the second set? I'm here to help you. Let's count the tips. We have 8 tips on the purple stars. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And we have 8 sides of the diamonds, because there are two diamonds there. 8 multiplied by 8 equals 64. That's how the number was calculated. Let's do the calculations for the missing number. We have 12 tips. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, which are represented by 16 sides. 12 multiplied by 16 equals 192, which is represented by choice D. So the correct answer here is choice D, 192. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. You will enjoy this question because it tests your logical thinking and analytical skills. You are presented with the dart in the exact middle of the dartboard. Dart has numbers on top of the ribbon and at the end of the ribbon. The numbers on the ribbon are 13, 18, 41, 128, and 517. Numbers at the end of the ribbon are 18, 41, 128, 517, and then comes the missing number you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choices A, 1,921, choice B, 2029, choice C, 2359, 
And last but not least, choice D2590. Give yourself a moment, maybe pause this video to see if you can calculate the answer. Are you ready? Let's move forward so I can share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. First, to answer this question, let's understand what we're dealing with. Since this game may not be very familiar in all the parts of the world, let's start with the definition. Darts is the competitive sport in which players throw small sharp pointed missiles, known as darts, at the round target known as dartboard. Now let's look closely at the dart we're dealing with. Our dart is unique because it has ribbons. There is a number on the ribbon and there is a calculated number at the end of the ribbon. To complete the calculations, let's assign each ribbon unique number. We're dealing with ribbons 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And as you might have already figured out, the number at the end of the ribbon is calculated based on the sequence ID and number on top of the ribbon itself. The formula to do the calculations is that the end of the ribbon number is calculated as number on top of the ribbon multiplied by sequence ID plus 5. Let's look at the example. The first blue ribbon has the sequence number 1 so that the end of the ribbon number is calculated as 13 multiplied by 1 plus 5 which would be equals 18. The second ribbon number is calculated as 18 multiplied by 2 plus 5 equals 41. The third ribbon number is calculated as 41 multiplied by 3 plus 5 equals 128. And the fourth ribbon number is calculated as 128 multiplied by 4 plus 5 equals 517. Now we know how to calculate the missing number. The missing number is calculated as 517 multiplied by 5 plus 5, which would be equal to 2590. So the correct answer here is choice D, 2590. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Here's the very interesting question, which tests your ability to find solutions to unusual problems. You're presented with four expressions. And in fourth expression, the result of the expression is missing. Let's look at each expression closely. The first expression is 4 plus 2 equals 26. Something's definitely going on with this expression here. Second one is 8 plus 1 equals 79. Same thing here. And the third one is 6 plus 5 equals 111. In fourth expression, 7 plus 3, you need to find the result which is presented as the missing number represented by question mark. And you have four choices to select from. Choice A, 608. Choice B, 410. Choice C, 290. And last but not least, choice D, 375. Take a close look to this unusual set of expressions to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? Let me give you a quick hint. What if you introduce into this set of expressions not just the plus sign, but also a minus sign? Would that make any difference? I hope the hint was helpful because I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have figured out, we are not dealing with typical math expressions here. Because the pattern here is that the last two digits are calculated based on the two expressions subtraction and addition. Let's look at the example. The first expression is presented to us as 4 plus 2 equals 26. But numbers in 26 are calculated differently. For example, first number 2 is calculated as 4 minus 2. This is where I give you a hint of using not just the plus sign, but also look at the minus sign. And the second digit in 26, which is 6, is calculated as 4 plus 2 equals 6. Now let's look at the second expression. Second expression's result is calculated as 8 minus 1 equals 7, and then 8 plus 1 equals 9. The third expression is 6 minus 5 is 1, and 6 plus 5 is 11. That's where we get a three-digit number, 111. And now we can calculate the final fourth expression, which is calculated as 7 minus 3, so the first digit would be 4. And then we calculate it as 7 plus 3, which would be 10. So the correct answer here is choice B, 410. Did you figure it out? Or did you find a different solution? Please make sure to share your solution and rationale in comments. 
I love this challenge because it tests your analytical skills and spatial reasoning skills so well. You need to find the resulting shape after the transformations. You're presented with the square that consists of different triangles of a different color. And you need to turn the original shape 90 degree clockwise three times. You have four different choices to select the shape after the transformations. Choice A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can calculate the final solution. Did you figure it out? Because I am moving forward to share with you my version and my way of solving it. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To solve this challenge, you need to mentally turn the original shape 90 degrees three times. This is not easy to do because our brain is not really designed for this. But if we take one of the triangles and try to follow this triangle by turning the original square, this task might be much easier to accomplish. The caveat here is that, that we need to select triangles that are not symmetrical on both sides. For example, red triangles are symmetrical. You see red triangles on the left and red triangles on the right. And if we try to follow it, it would be extremely hard to detect where the red triangle will end up. But if we take green triangles, any one of them, or yellow triangles, they're much easier to follow. So let's do the turning. Let's take the original square and I am going to follow the green triangle on the left. Let's do the first turn 90 degrees. You see that the green triangle ended up on the top. Let's do another turn. We follow the same green triangle and now it's on the right side. And the last 90 degree turn, our green triangle ended up at the bottom. So the correct choice here is choice A, where green triangle ended up on the bottom. Do you have a better way to solve it? Or maybe did you come up with a different solution? Please make sure to post your thoughts and rationale in comments. Here's a puzzling question for you, but I have full confidence that you can solve it quickly. You're presented with 4x4 four four matrix. And the numbers are starting in the upper left corner. 9, 8, 3, 4. The second row numbers are 2, 9, 2, and then comes the missing number. The third row starts with 4, 6, 2, 0. And last but not least row is 7, 6, 2, and 6. You need to calculate the missing number. And you have four different choices to select from. Choice A, 2. Choice B, 5. Choice C, 6. And last but not least, choice D, 7. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you get to the right answer? I hope you did, because I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. You're probably tired of hearing this in this channel, but to solve these types of challenges, you need to detect the pattern. And the pattern here is that the last two digits are equal to the sum of the first two digits multiplied by two. Let's look at the example. The first row contains numbers 9, 8, 3, 4. And the expression here is that 9 plus 8 in parentheses multiplied by 2 equals 34. Based on this logic, the third number would be 4 plus 6 in parentheses multiplied by 2, which would be equal to 20, which represents the set of numbers 4, 6, and then 20. And then the last row would be 7 plus 6 in parentheses multiplied by 2, which would be 13 multiplied by 2, which would be equal to 26. So the missing number would be calculated as 2 plus 9 multiplied by 2 equals 22. So the correct answer here is choice A, 2. Did you get to the same answer? If you didn't, or maybe you got to a different answer, please make sure to post your version in comments. Here's an amazing question to validate your analytical skills and spatial reasoning. You're presented with the square, which is broken down into four parts. Three parts are filled with different shapes, and fourth part is missing. You need to determine which choice would create the most symmetrical large square. And you need to select this choice out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can meet the condition and select the right shape. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To solve this challenge, let's better understand what we're dealing with. We have five types of shapes. We have L shape, we have a semicircle, we have a semi-diamond, semi-heart, and rectangle. 
Each one of these shapes is located in a small square, and each one of the shapes has one, two, or three dots inside of it. Now, large square is broken into four small squares. Let's give each one of the small squares an ID. We'll call them area one, area two, area three, and then comes the missing area, which we need to fill would be area four. If we go back to the original question, our goal is to identify which choice would create the most symmetrical large square. Let's look closely at what most symmetrical might mean. Let's draw a horizontal symmetrical line and let's draw a vertical symmetrical line to help us define the symmetry in the large square. Let's look at the easiest symmetrical objects we can identify. For example, between area one and area two, we can build the full yellow diamond. And to do this, we will use the two half diamond objects with one dot. Between area two and area three, we can build a full heart using the semi hearts and one dot on each side. The choice that we would need to select would help us build the circle between areas one and four, and the circle would be green and will have one dot. And the correct choice will also help us build the symmetrical L-shaped object between areas three and four, which will have two dots. Two choices match both of these criteria, and these choices are A and B. Which one do you think we should select? Let's look closely to see if we can determine some additional patterns. For example, across horizontal line, if we look, there is a red L shape and blue L shape. So the key here is L shape. It's on the both sides of the horizontal symmetrical line. Same thing with green triangle in area three and potentially we would need to have yellow triangle or triangle of other color in the area four. We can also see the symmetry diagonally across the horizontal symmetrical line. For example, a red L shape in area one has two dots and green triangle in area three has two dots as well, which means that the missing object should have three dots symmetrical to the blue L shape. So the triangle in area four will need to have three dots very similar symmetry exists between rectangle in area two and area four. It should be a rectangle in area four and rectangle should have three dots as well. Based on all of this analysis, I think the correct choice here is choice A. Did you detect any other symmetries or did you come up with the different solution? Please make sure to post your version, answer and solution in comments. Here's an amazing problem where you need to exercise your brain and cognitive skills by calculating not just one number, but two numbers. You're presented with the scale and you see that the value of diamond as well as the sum values are missing. And you need to ensure that scale remains balanced by calculating the value of the diamond as well as the sum. And once you've done with your calculations, you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, values 18 and 96. Choice B, values 12 and 88. Choice C, values 20 and 92. And last but not least, choice D, values 19 and 94. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can complete the calculations. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the calculations. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To solve this challenge, let's look at the picture closely to better understand what we're dealing with. We're presented with the multi-tier scale, and the scale has four tiers. Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, and Tier 4. Scale remains in balance because values on the left side and on the right side are equal, and the values are represented by the total of numbers inside of each shape. For example, circle has number 12, hexagon has number 6, triangle has number 3, and square has number 4. Let's look closely at tier 3 to better understand how this tier remains in balance. As I already mentioned, each tier remains in balance because the numbers are equal on both sides. So on the left of the tier 3, we have two hexagons with total value of 12. On the right of the tier 3, we have hexagon, which equals number 6, plus two triangles, 3 plus 3. So on both sides, the total value is 12. This is why tier 3 remains in balance. Now let's look closely at the tier 2. On the left of the tier 2, we have two circles. Each circle has a value of 12. Two circles would be equal 24. On the left of the tier 2, we have two circles with total value of 24 and the entire tier 3, which also equals 24. 
This what keeps tier 2 in balance. Now, knowing this logic, we can calculate the missing value on tier 4. Because tier 4 needs to remain in balance, the value of 12 plus 6 should be equal to the missing value, which means that the missing value is 18. And the total sum will be calculated as the sum of all the numbers. The sum of tier 2 and tier 3 would be 24 plus 24 plus 48 on the right side of tier 1, which would equal 96. So the correct answer here is choice A, 18 and 96. Did you get to the different answer? Please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Thanks for watching. If the content was helpful, please give us a like and consider subscribing. This is the way for you to tell us that you need more content like this and we'll make sure to deliver it for you in the future. For links and resources referenced in this video, please check the description. You can also go directly to our website howtoanalyzedata.net to find what you're looking for and download the materials. We really thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage of this channel. Please leave feedback, suggestions or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.